Man of the Prize, the podcast. Harvey here, your host. How are you? Hope you're having a good week. Hope the day is treating you well. I'm recording this on a holiday, so I'm hoping that you're enjoying yourself. I had a fun day. As usual, I have another great guest, another good man on here to talk about life. I have Chris Fontana on here. How are you today, sir? I'm doing good, man. How you doing? I'm good. Thank you very much. Before we dive in, quick bio, because you know I like a good bio. From the man himself, grew up on Long Island, so did I. <laughs> Had the best childhood. At 13, my father passed away, followed by years of severe panic attacks, depression, severe weight gain, self-loathing, and alcoholism. I was able to overcome my adversities, completely change my mindset, started a brand, and changed everything. Through vulnerability, I found strength and hope to do the same for other men. This is literally why I do this podcast. The crap that we go through and being able to be vulnerable, talking about it, and then become better because of our experiences. So I'm glad to talk to you. So Chris, thank you very much for being on here. Um, I appreciate it. One last thing before I get started. The reason I created this podcast is because I like men talking. I am not trained. I'm not a therapist. I'm just a guy who likes to hear other men talk. So I want you to keep that in mind. If you're listening or watching, feel comfortable hearing a man talk and then do the same. This is how we stay out of that toxic area. We don't hold that stuff in. We get it out. Friend, family, therapist, whatever. This is how we are better men because we don't hold it in. We let it out. And with that said, Chris, you ready to go? Yeah, man. All right, let's do it. All right. So I read a quick bio. But let's just say somebody pulled up on the street and they saw you like, hey, Chris, what's up? And you had like 10 seconds to give them the bio. Not the, you know, this not this hmm. perfectly well-constructed bio that I just read here. But if you had 10 seconds to tell somebody about you, what would you tell them? Whew, 10 seconds? Um, yeah, man. Uh, I would tell them mental health warrior, chose sobriety, 100 pounds down and never going back. That's it. So that's what's up. We find out what's important. I think I asked that because I'm interested to see what you think really just kind of describes you. We pick out the important things and we put them out there. And I think you covered everything. Yeah, so that's good. That's good. All right. If you are a new listener or a new watcher, thank you. I appreciate you giving me of your time. And I hope you appreciate this. And I hope you listen to more of newer ones and stuff in the past. This podcast is called Men Are the Prize. Prize is the key word. It's one of my favorite words. I take four of those letters and I attach words to them that represent good characteristics that I think make a good man. We start at the beginning. The first letter is P. The word is purpose. Reason for which something is done or created or for which something exists. So, Chris, what is your purpose now? I think, uh, well, I think you touched a little bit on when you when you read my bio, and and that really is to help men, um, who are either going through some type of you know mental health issues or, um, even you know battles with addiction, and and like you know you kind of alluded to before, you're like I'm not a therapist, I'm not you know trained in any of that capacity, but I've been there, and I think that is the best way to really know how to help someone is if you went through it and going through those darkest days of my life to find meaning of all that is, I think I have the tools to help men right now to that, who are going through that same type of depression, the anxiety, you know, possibly addiction, just being overweight, self-loathing that, that feeling of really just giving up, you know, and just settling, you know, settling for misery. And I think that's one of the worst things that, that not, not only men, really anyone can do in life is, is settle, you know, like you never want to settle. I think it, it affects your outlook in life. It affects your relationships in life. And, and that potentially sets, you know, generations of that. And, and, you know, we have to be the best for the people that need us most. And that's what I really want to help men with. And, and to me, I think that's, the purpose that, that I have right now. And I think along with you and the other guys, uh, the NG, uh, NGBN network, that that's really where I found, I, I feel found my purpose. That's cool. That's cool. I want to delve into that though. So losing your dad and you going through your issues, your, your weight loss, your weight gain, your mental health. If I saw somebody who went through all that, I would understand 
a level of selfishness for that person. I lost my dad. It's a big part of my life. I kind of let myself go drinking, whatever, addiction, all these things that happen. I would understand somebody saying, you know what? I need to fix me. I've gone through some junk and now I got to get myself back. And when addictions involve, you never cured. You're continually, you're always an addict. So my question for you is, how did you get from, I need to take care of myself? And you did mention it's your purpose, but how did you get from, I'm helping me to now I want to help others? Because I, I, I feel like I would be, I don't know what I'm doing with me. How did you get, it's a profound change to say, you know what, not only am I helping myself, but there's men out there. What was it aside from having those skills that made you decide I can help other people? What happened? Um, you know, I think it's really, you just, and, and me, I don't know. It was like, almost like I can see the misery out, out there with people, you know, and maybe just cause like you said, like when you go through it and, and I've been through it, um, you, you see it in other people and it kind of almost, I don't want to say, it, it brings me back to when I was going through it, you know, and it's just like, wow, man, if that guy is going through what I'm going through, I just, you know, I've, man, I feel for him, <laughs> you know, like if it, it, and it's just, maybe I was always that type of person where you want to help people anyway, you know, so how is the best way to be able to help that person, you know, and that's just kind of maybe what clicked in my head when, when, you know, a few years ago when, when COVID hit and I uh, started putting my, my story out there on social media because I just felt like something had to be, had to come out of all that that I went through I don't know what it was I was gonna do you know and I kind of when I talked about it in my bio and I, I said started a brand and it changed everything and it really did you know it started with just kind of a, a apparel and you know my brand is, is go primal and, and really it's just a mindset and and it's a mindset of overcoming adversities and it's a lifestyle and, and really it was my lifestyle you know what I went through to overcome all those adversities and when COVID hit, you know, I, I kind of was like, you know what, maybe this is my opportunity. Maybe this is my chance. I'm home. Let me put my stuff, my story out on, on, on social media, you know, and I couldn't believe like, you know, kind of the feedback of people reaching out being like, how'd you overcome that? How'd you do it? You know, how'd you get started? And, you know, it was just, I think that that's when it would really hit me. Like, man, I, I really have an opportunity to help people and, and really just kind of, just grew from there. I think a lot of men don't realize that in the struggles that we go through, that we're not alone. And I feel like it seems like you put something out there where a lot of men like, oh, he's going through the similar shit that I went through. Mm -hmm. I thought it was just me. And then it's 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 got to be, I don't know if it's like a good feeling, but it's got to be like, oh, okay. He made it out the other side. And I feel like that must have been it. Men were like, Okay, he went through it. I can do it. And then you got these men talking to you. What's the feeling like when you get somebody and you can kind of give them some of your knowledge, some of, you know, how you've gone through it? What's the what's the feeling like when you you have a pretty good idea that you're helping a man get through some stuff? Uh, I mean, fuck it. Feels good as shit. <laughs> you know, mm -hmm. and and you know, I feel like I'm helping him and I'm helping you know, every, everyone that's in his that's in his life. I think you're helping because you're just making that person, uh, you know, a, a, a better, a better man or a better human and whatever it is. And man, and you know, Hey, it's maybe it's a little bit of selfish that, that you get that good feeling. But right. to me, like, I don't know, that's just how I feel. I'm going to tell you how it is, but it feels good as shit when, when you're able to help someone, you know, I mean, and it just makes you want to keep going with it, you know? And, and that's, I think is, you know, that's all right for me. You know, I think it's okay to feel that. That's no, that's good. Nothing wrong with that. So how, and as much as you're willing to go with in this answer, what kind, what kind of father are you in relation to losing a dad at such a young age? How did that affect the kind of dad that you are? Um, it definitely, you know, and I was 13 when my dad passed. So, you know, I do remember the kind of man he was, I do remember the kind of father he was. And, you know, he was a great, great father, great man. And that's who I kind of emulate myself after, like where, 
you know, and I feel like all the things that I kind of got cheated out in life or, you know, I felt that I got cheated out in life, you know, with him, you know, passing at such a young age, I have my two young boys and, and I feel like I, I have, there's my other opportunity, man, to, to, you know, everything I got cheated on with, I get to experience with them, you know, God willing. Um, and it just makes me appreciate everything so much more, you know, like every day I'm with them. It's just like, it truly is to me like a gift, you know, and, it's it's hard to look at it and, and just feel any other negative feeling in life is when, when you do that you know and that's i think what and i mean not only that i mean just feeling grateful in general you know coming over over uh, all my other uh adversities but i think fatherhood is is hands down one of the best things that that you can ever achieve as a man you know and um to be able to you know, raise them, you know, and, and teach them like things. And, and it's just, to me, it's like an amazing feeling and, uh, some I'm, I'm definitely very, very grateful for. Uh, so obviously with his passing and kind of what you went through and addiction is kind of part of your life now, was that something, cause that's, that's in our genes or something that's passed down was your dad an addict also, or is that um, something that came from you? No, I don't. I don't think he was uh, necessarily an addict. Um, from what I heard, he he definitely liked to have his fun, <laughs> you know. And uh, <laughs> but I mean, as kids growing up, you never saw any of that. Um, but I do have, um, you know, some other people in my family. Um, you know, my uncle, his my dad's brother was was an addict. Uh, have some cousins that have you know some issues with that. Um, so I think it's definitely somewhere in, in our family genes somewhere so it's uh you know it, it was tough to to kind of deal with with his loss at such a young age um right. and i don't want to say I necessarily went went right to alcohol then because you know like i said i was 13 mm -hmm. um but it definitely affected me later on in life when i started uh you know failing in life failing out of college you know just being a disappointment you know life not going you know, the direction I thought it was going to go or thought that I should go or, you know, just really just being just a disappointment. And um, that's when really the alcohol kind of played a major role and, and just kind of numbing everything. Um, you know, and like I said, I just didn't see my life going that way, like failing out of school, you know, just coming home and just being like, man, what the, what the fuck am I going to do with my life now? I can't believe this. And I know he's disappointed, you know, down looking down on me, and if I'm disappointed in myself, and it was that, you know, poor me attitude, and why me? Why is all this happening to me? And just basically, you know, numbed it with alcohol, you know, and and you know, pretty severely to the, you know, I was at 19 already just blocking out every time just drinking and going to bars at 19, blocking out, and you know, at 22, crashed my my Jeep on a blackout. You know, thank God I only hit five park cars, so no one else was was involved. Just just me. Um, you know, busted up my knee pretty pretty good. Had reconstructive knee surgery. You know, that was that was probably considered my first you know rock bottom. Um, and you know, obviously I didn't I didn't learn my lesson then, and kind of kept going with the alcohol and just gained a lot of weight. And again, that that disappointment that self-loathing, you know, at my worst 300 pounds where, you know, I was athletic in high school, always played sports growing up, you know, that wasn't me, you know, and that was kind of the theme pretty much after I graduated high school was, man, this isn't me, man, this isn't me, you know, like that, that just kind of kept going up until really when I was 30 years old. And, and I think that, definitely you had had uh, a part in in the anxiety and the depression and the self-loathing and, and just you know looking at myself in the mirror all the time just being like man I hate you man I hate you you know and just horrible thing to to say to yourself and actually believe it you know it wasn't just a thing like oh I'm pissed off at myself for doing that no like to have actually that hatred towards yourself just to you know where you were in life how you looked in life like every, everything man it was just horrible and you know, it took 10 plus years of that where, you know, it was uh, finally I just, you know, got sick and tired of being sick and tired and, and came to a point in my life where it was, you know, w w do I settle 
for misery or, or am I going to choose to struggle to get better? You know, and, and I just kind of went that route and, and, you know, call it the primal mindset. You know, I didn't know it back then, but that that's basically what, what, what I call it. You know, the primal mindset where it's, I'm going to wake up today. I go today, you know, and I didn't give a shit what happened the day before, you know, I had severe bouts w- with anxiety attacks and, you know, for a long time and, an anxiety attack where I felt like I was dying every day, you know, and suffered in silence, didn't talk, didn't tell anyone my feelings at all, just was really just destined to be like, fuck it, I'll be miserable for the rest of my life, or I'm, I'm going to die young, just like my dad did. And that, that's it. That's how it's going to be. And, you know, it took that one one day where after a severe panic attack, came home crying from the gym and just being like, man, fuck it. You know, I, I, I you know, I think I told you the story before and when I was able, you know, I ran five miles on a treadmill and had to quit. And, and I was like, you know what, tomorrow I'm going to run six miles, uh, six minutes. All right. And that was just the mindset. That was the primal mindset. It doesn't matter what happened yesterday. You're going to get up and, and you're going to go and you're going to trust your instincts because you will get better. You will get faster. You will get stronger because that's in our instincts to, to keep going. We, we learn quitting. You know, and I'm just going to learn how to do that and just keep going every day. And little by little, I got stronger. Little by little, I got a little faster. Little by little, I started to lose some more weight. Little by little, the anxiety started to go away, you know. And unfortunately, the alcohol was still kind of there because I did have a lot of issues still dealing with, with, uh, you know, the disappointment and and maybe, you know, things with my father and everything. And then just, um, you know, so it took another eight years of that, you know, at 38, I was finally able to get sober. Um, you know, and that's when everything kind of came together. That's, I was able to shed a little bit of that last weight and, you know, ultimately lost a hundred pounds and, you know, just coming up on five years sober. And, and it's just probably one of, you know, the, the best decision I ever made in my life is to quit alcohol and, you know, and I got sober and, you know, I don't think it's a coincidence that then after that I had had my boys, you know, everything kind of started coming, coming together, um, you know, and I got sober before they were born, but they definitely keep me sober now. And when I have to be the best for the people that need me, need me most, that's them. And, and it starts with not having a drink. And that's what I keep telling myself every day. And, and it's just no negotiations, you know, um, it's like that with everything, man. If you want something, you you got to go out and get it. You know, and you got to trust your instincts that if you keep going, you will get it, you know, and that was that, that primal mindset that, that I have and that I, I'd love to teach to other men. That's awesome. That's excellent. Um, let's move on to the next letter. And I feel like you pretty much answered it, but <laughs> we'll delve into it anyway. So the next letter in the word prizes are the word is resilience, the capacity to recover quickly from difficulties and toughness. Like I said, I feel like you kind of answered it, but hey, we'll, we'll say it again. Can you think of a particular situation, something that happened to you where you discovered that you had a resilience that you didn't know that you had? Um, You know, it was when I first learned about resiliency was probably when my, my father passed and um, my mother she uh she she didn't say why me she didn't sulk she didn't get depressed she got up and got a job because she had three kids that she had to take care of you know and that was like my first kind of lesson about resiliency like wow man you when life fucking knocks you down man you got to keep getting up and, and and just go you know you you can't when you have people that rely on you it doesn't you know you can't you can't stop you got to have that resiliency in, in you where you you got to get up and be like man i got to just keep going you know, and that was like kind of, you know, I, and I, I did lose that along the way, you know, but at a young age, I saw that and I said, wow, man, that's, you know, incredible. And, and she led by example. She didn't preach to us. She just led by example. She was a tough woman, man. She, uh, she lost her father when she was 13, you know, so she kind of, she kind of saw that with, with, with her mother. My grandmother was that same mentality. You know, she had, my grandmother had, you know, had six kids. So, when when uh, her husband passed, she she had to get a job, and my mom and her sister, you know, would take care of the house. And you know, fast forward and look at my mom's in that situation again. So she had that training already, you know. And that's so when, when I see like, wow, that's that's when I also see training of the mind. Because when you train the mind, man, you 
it kicks in when it needs to, you know, it's almost instinctual, you know, and, and that was, I think my first lesson. And that's what I kind of went back to when, when I came to that point where I had to show that, that resiliency and be like, all right, I, I got to start training my mind to learn how to just keep going and know that that's in me, that I can do it, you know, and I've seen it. My mother showed it to me, you know, and, and I think that, always stuck with me and, and always will. And that, and that's something that, that was uh, a huge, huge life lesson for me. Are you able to teach that kind of resilience to your kids? I think so. Absolutely. Um, I think it's, again, like I said, I, I think it's something in us. I think we have that as all humans, but it can be lost if it's not, constantly you know taught you know or, or constantly reminded of you know and like my son he's three you know he's i'm already telling him you know like if he says oh i can't daddy i said no you're a fontana you can do it and he and he'll repeat i'm a fontana i'm like yeah let's go <laughs> you know so that's something that you gotta you know in, ingrain in them because if they don't they're gonna get lost along the way you know and that and that kind of goes back to how why we should help men you know they they, they got to teach their sons that, right? You know, and maybe they lost it. Maybe they lost it along the way. And maybe they didn't have anyone to show them that. And that's where we come in. You know, we got men that can show them that, you know, and they're going to learn that. And they're going to pass it down to their sons. And their sons are going to pass it down to their sons. And we're going to have generations of, of guys who are just going to say, fuck it. Yeah, I can do it. You know, and that that's, I think, something that, man, that's, that's going to feel good to be able to help people out with that. Mm -hmm. A bunch of men walking around with confidence. Yeah. It's a damn good group of men. And confidence is something at times it can be difficult for men to have, to find, to rediscover. I don't know. You know, masculinity has a lot to do with that. We're just kind of built. We're supposed to do this. Big, strong men, take care of family, whatever. And if we're not doing it to start with, then we start to question ourselves. Then that's where the struggle comes in. And do we fall or do we like, no, I can do this and come back. And I agree with you. We have a bunch of men. NGBN is a good group of people who are going to show men just how amazing they are. And just because, you know, you fall down doesn't mean you're not getting back up. And sometimes we're just kind of leading you, just getting you back on the path. That's really what it is. Because, you know, stuff happens. Shit happens. We go through life. I got a plan. I'm going to do this. Something happens. How do I get back? Mm -hmm. And I think that's what it is. That's why I like the idea of talking. So hearing you talk about your story and how you really come through with it and I think come out a better man for it is excellent. So this is good to hear. Um, we skip the I. The next letter in the word prize is Z. The word is zeal. Enthusiastic devotion. So aside from work and aside from wife and kids, family in general, Take a second. What are you enthusiastically devoted to? What are you enthusiastically devoted to? Oh, man, that's a tough one. <laughs> um, I mean, besides the whole, you know, passion behind behind helping people and, mm -hmm. um, you know, it, it's a passion for, for just enjoying life, man. Just, I think just being just so grateful that, that we're here, you know, so grateful that, that we're healthy. Um, cause there just could be so much, so much, you know, bad things that happen to people, man. And, and, it, and it's sad when you see it, but it's really just, just really makes you appreciate, you know, what you have. And, and I think just kind of everything, what I've been going through and, or I went through it and just the years of just absolutely hating myself and hating life and just, having that feeling that um that you have nothing to look forward to so i think just actually just being here and having something to look forward to man it, i think it's just something that I, I definitely definitely enthusiastic about so that's good that's good it i don't know I, and maybe i'm wrong i feel like a lot of times we're surviving and we're living and it feels like you're living Sometimes we're just trying to go day to day, yeah. but you're enjoying life. And there's a distinct difference between just trying to get by versus getting by, but enjoying what you're doing. So that's good to hear. And off of that, 
I do want to ask this though. A lot of men I talk to and I ask them two things. Like, what do you do to self-soothe? And do you have like a really good friend to talk to if something bad happens? A lot of times it doesn't occur to men that taking care of yourself is an important thing to do. And that means just something to do that is not related to anybody else. You're not doing it for anybody else, but for you. So I'll ask you, what is it that you do for you that doesn't have to deal with the kids or your wife or business? Life can throw a lot of shit on our shoulders. Mm -hmm. it, it, it can be heavy. And we can't really ever get away from it. But for maybe an hour, or an hour and a half, or a day, what do you do for you? What do you do to self-soothe? Um, well, I would say maybe a few things, but, uh, I mean, obviously exercise is a big part of that. Um, you know, especially I would say running, you know, I, I kind of look at it as, as meditation, um, cause meditation, you, you know, it doesn't necessarily have to mean, you, you know, you're sitting there Indian style in, in uh, complete silence, you know, like I think meditation to me is just anything that you kind of get lost in, in your head and lost in your thoughts and something that calms you. And to me, like, you know, running definitely does that, you know, and it doesn't have to be balls to the walls all out sprint, you know, but if I'm just going on a nice, easy jog, man, I, and keep it up for three, four miles, like to me, that that's definitely something that that helps me out when, when life is, you know, kind of throwing a bunch of shit at you. Um, that or man, go fishing, <laughs> yeah, fishing, okay. you know, being out on Long Island, man, I love to fish. So growing up, you know, we were always fishing. So and just now it's. Anytime I, I can get away to fish it is definitely something that uh, helps me out with, with mentally too. Okay. The last letter in the word prize is E. The word is expectation. A strong belief that something will happen or be the case in the future. So in a year and five years, where is the primal mindset going to be? What's the next steps for what you've created? Well, I would say, I mean, I would, I'll answer the, the five years first, man. I just want to build an empire for my boys. <laughs> you know, that's, okay. that's what it comes okay. down to. Um, but really, yeah, it's like, I, I want, I want the, the primal mindset to, you know, in even just the, the go primal logo, the GP, you know, just be as common as the Nike swoosh sign, man, and uh, have everyone, you know, going around with the primal mindset, you know, that's going to be, that's going to be an awesome thing, man. Just a bunch of people, confident men walking around and man, I think just, you know, and giving back to, to, to the universe, you know, when you give good back to the universe, it just creates such a, a, a better, better atmosphere for everyone. And, you know, that that's that's the goal, man. Just have everyone everyone walking around with that primal mindset. Okay. okay. All right. The final letter, but final letter in just how I ask these questions is I, and I don't associate a word with I. The I represents the man that I'm speaking to. So if we can take off the shackles, all the titles that we carry. So when you're not a father, a husband, a CEO, a runner, an athlete, an addict, all these things that can be thrown on us. When you throw all that stuff to the side, it's just you at your core. Who are you, Chris? Uh, you know, and, and I, I, I hate to repeat myself, but man, just someone who loves life right now, you know, <laughs> and I, 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 I know it's kind of the, the, the cliche answer or, or the easy way out, but I mean, that's just, like I said, when I go through years of just absolutely hating myself, mm -hmm. man, to, to wake up every day and just be happy and healthy and have, and have that family is, I'm just really just, man, just happy to be fucking just, just here, <laughs> you know? Mm -hmm. I hear you. Hey, that's your answer. And that's great. I'm with that. Thanks for answering the questions in the prize mantra. I have a few more. I'll throw you away. Um, what are you afraid of? that you can not control that I cannot control. I would, I would say, you know, like I said, I've seen life, you know, hand, hand some shit down and, and take some people. So really just not being around for my boys, you know? Okay. All right. What are you afraid of that you can control? 
same thing. <laughs> you know, and and I always <laughs> like to uh I always like to say, you know, I, I pretty much cuz you're always going to have fear. Yeah, you know, it's just I think a part of life. So and and you can't tell someone not to have fear, but I think you have to use that, you know. And I always say I you know, I use my fear and faith because the fear of not being around for my boys is what drives me to what I can control. You know, not having a drink, staying healthy, exercising, you know, don't smoke, you know, all the things that I can control to be around for my boys. That's what fear pushes me to do, you know, not not get lazy, eat a bunch of shit food, gain all that weight back. Because what happens? You start hating yourself. You're not going to be a good father. You have one drink. What happens? You're going to start blacking out. You're not going to be a good father. So the fear is what drives me. And my faith is what kind of takes that ease out of my head that like hey man just keep putting good back into the universe you know and and your higher power is going to take care of you and it's it's out of your hands so it's kind of have to you're here now you got to set your boys up now where they're going to have that mindset you know because you know tomorrow's promise to nobody you know and i just got to put my faith in the universe that you know, I'm going to be able to, you know, be here, you know, for my boys and teach them to grow up to be, you know, you know, big, strong, confident men. That's good. Okay. Last question. Like I mentioned earlier, when I talk to a lot of men, putting yourself first is is something really foreign to men because we're raised to take care of everybody else. We're here to provide financially and whatever, you know, things, house, clothes, lights, all that good stuff. But what do you do to provide? Here's a better question. To take care of yourself, you have to recognize that sometimes you got to get some stuff out and you got to talk. Do you have a friend, partner, somebody who's not your wife, who's mm -hmm. not family, who you could call and be like, I did some dumb shit today. I don't even know why I did it. It was dumb as hell. I don't know what was going on in my head. Do you have a friend who you could call who would listen to you on the phone who would say, yes, Chris, what the hell were you thinking? That was dumb. But that you'd be comfortable enough to say that to and know that it was a safe space. I could get that out. They're not going to run around and tell people. And you'd leave that conversation feeling good because you're able to release. Do you have that person in the world? Yeah. Yeah, definitely. Um you know, and, and yeah, I, I mean, excluding my wife and family. Yeah. <laughs> because my wife's obviously the first one, you know, you go to, right. but, right. but yeah, I got that, that friend who I kind of, I've known since, you know, he was actually my, my uh, roommate and, and, you know, freshman year in college that to this day, we still, I was actually at just at his house for the 4th of July in Jersey. So okay. I got, you know, and I, man, I'll tell that guy anything, you know, and vice versa. He'll tell me anything. And that's just, you know, that's, that's going to be my, 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 uh, my friend for life, man. So yeah, absolutely. That's good. I exclude family because it's different. Yeah. It's different. I mean, if it's a parent or something, there's a difference of telling your mom that you did something that's embarrassing because your mom's going to look at it like, Oh, Chris, Yeah. <laughs> or, you know, yeah. or your wife was like, Chris, Yeah. but as opposed to like your boy, that person who's probably who may know who may have known you longer than your wife, who may know you better than your mom, that person who can who can laughingly tell you that you did some dumb shit. And not a lot of men have that. And because of that, we keep a lot of that stuff inside. Yeah. So it's good that you have it. It's important. It really is. And I'm glad that you have somebody like that. Um, thank you for answering these questions. It was yeah, enlightening. It was enlightening. Um, we talked around it, but I want to kind of jump into it. So can you kind of, if you can condense, tell us what the primal mindset is, tell us about the website, tell us about what you do. And then we can kind of get into a quick convo about how we know each other and what we're going to be doing in, in the future. So tell us about you. Yeah, man. Um, yeah, my, my brand is go primal. Um, the website is go primal Um, and really I have, pretty much like three aspects of my, of my brand. I have the apparel, I have the podcast, uh, which is called the primal mindset. And then I have, you know, the, the mindset coaching, which I, I call the, uh, primal mindset partnership. Cause to me, like 
I don't want to be necessarily a coach. I want to be your partner because I've been there, man. So I'm I'm right next to you. Let's go. You know, if you need help, I, I'm there. And and that's the the primal mindset partnership that that I offer. And, you know, it's an eight week program. I call it Rise Up and Reset. And you know, that's pretty much, you know, to to have the primal mindset is kind of what we were talking about before. Whereas you're gonna go through adversities in life. You know, and there's just no way way around it that life is going to knock you down and it's going to try to keep you down if you let it and the primal mindset is just something that you got to trust your instincts because like to, when i think of go primal i think of a, a lion that's on a hunt you know when they're on a hunt they're going after something that they need you know it's it's a necessity to survive and they rely on their instincts and, and they don't stop until they get it you know, and that that's the primal mindset. You see something that you that you need or you want and you keep going and you don't stop until you get it. And and there's gonna be things thrown at you. And and to me, I try to help people, you know, to not make excuses, make adjustments, because that's what life is, man. You it's all about making adjustments. And that's what you're gonna have to do. You're gonna have to learn to to be uncomfortable, man. Get get comfortable being uncomfortable. You're gonna have to do things that that aren't gonna feel good or aren't gonna feel right. But Ultimately, it's going to make you a stronger person. You know, it, I, it, I'm going to teach you how to stay consistent with things. You know, if you don't like the way you look, all right, let's go. Let's change something. Let's get active. Let's do something. Let's lift some weights. You know, let's eat some better food. So, you know, I help you out with that. And, you know, that that's kind of the the, the mindset part of it. And, you know, the podcast, you know, I've had you on and I, and I love having guys come on and, and share their stories about overcoming adversities, whatever it is. And, you know, I've had guests from whether it's mental health, dealing with, you know, losing a child, alcoholism, um, just, you know, any type of adversity that, that you can think of, you know, diseases, sicknesses, and just the mindset it takes for other people, to, what they did to overcome that and, and the mindset that they still have today to, to, to keep going. You know, and, and I think it gives people a lot of hope. You know, I've had people reach out and say, man, that podcast was awesome. I, I, it's just in, to hear someone else going through that and, and they seem like they're all right now. Like It just gives people hope, man. It shows that you have everyday people, everyday men that are struggling. And when they hear that and they say, wow, man, that guy's going through that shit, too. Look, and he came out on top. What did he do? That's what he did. Oh, all right. Maybe I'm going to try that. Or maybe I'm going to reach out to him and see if he can, you know, give me some advice, you know, whatever it is, man, it's just that starts the ball rolling, you know, and that's how little by little, man, you just start helping people and it just grows and grows and grows. And, man, I would love for everyone to just walk around with that primal mindset, you know, and if that has, you know, the podcast helps that. All right, man. And then, you know, they start wearing the apparel, man, wear the confidence, you know, I always say, you know, don't, you know, champions, they don't always win man but they always get up so you know you can wear the confidence of, of a champion you know put on the gold primal brand and and you know it's just it's a lifestyle and then that's what i and that's basically what would to me is it's my lifestyle and that's what i want to give to people okay so what kind of apparel you got on the site man uh i got some t-shirts some tank tops some hoodies um yeah different different collections um as you can see i got the the gp patriot um I, I have a big uh, respect for, you know, all the all the veterans or, 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 you know, soldiers right now. And, you know, even police, firemen, I've always had the you utmost know, respect. So I do. I like the uh, the GP Patriot collection. Um, you know, I have, I have uh, the confidence collection, the pride collection, you know, just basically all, all the all the mindset that, you know, the finisher collection, you know, start strong, finish stronger. You know, it's just all that, that mentality of the characteristics that you need to just kind of keep going in life. And that's what I put on, on the apparel. Excellent. So aside from the website, which is goprimousa.com, that's the right side. Yep. Okay. Where else can people find you? Social media, where are you, um, where are you stationed? On Instagram, uh, on my personal page is uh, Chris Fontana GP, you know, one word. Um, and then we do have a uh, go primal, page on there um pretty much if you go to my instagram page you, and you go on my bio and you go to linkedin you can pretty much go to everything the go primal page um the podcast the website uh i got the uh nbgn uh website on there as well just becoming a part of that and the men's network and, and you know that's how you know we got linked up 
Um, so pretty much, yeah, if you go to my Instagram page, Chris Fontana GP, um, is, you know, you know, you can find everything. Okay. All right. So go primerusa.com. If you want the shirts, the hoodies, go there, prize 10, 10% discount. Use that. You get that for listening to this episode. So you're welcome <laughs> for getting that to you. <laughs> um, finally, as we end this, we've mentioned it, NGBN. It's a TV network for men, 40, 50, 60. We are a bunch of people, men and women, who are here to talk to men to let them know that they can be emotional, that they can talk, that they're not going through this by themselves, that life is still there for the living. And it's in your face, and you can see just a bunch of different people talking about this. So you want to hit our page, NGBN, online. You want to get the app. You're going to start watching these episodes. You should be able to see this when this comes out. You're able to see mine, which when that drops, which should be pretty soon based mm -hmm. on when this is recording. Either way, I am proud to say that I am a partner with Chris and with Charles and with Rubio with, and with Ian, all these people who are doing a lot for the benefit of men so that we can survive and we can thrive. So, Chris, thank you very much for doing this episode. I appreciate it. Thanks for giving me your time. Yeah, man. Thanks Good for having me on, man. It was awesome. Well, it was Good. Thank you to everybody who listens. Thank you to Kristen, who does my intro and my outro. Smooth voice getting you in, smooth voice getting you out. I like hearing that, too. It works well for me. Finally, thank you to new and old watchers, listeners of this podcast. Men are the prize where your inner monologue is revealed. I'll see you next week. Have a good one.